Coming up on today's episode of AMA Drone Report. The AMA responds to the FAA's notice of proposed rulemaking on UAV flights over people. The New Zealand CAA determines a plane accident was not caused by a drone. And the AMA responds to the FAA's advance notice of proposed rulemaking on the secure operations of small UAS and model aircrafts. Welcome to Airborne's AMA Drone Report, a weekly news program covering the recreational drone world. In partnership with the Academy of Model Aeronautics, one of the oldest and most respected aviation organizations in the world, with more than 200,000 members and 2,400 clubs across the country. I'm Sophie Herlock. The Academy of Model Aeronautics has responded to the FAA's notice of proposed rulemaking on the operations of small UAS over people as well as night operations without the need for a waiver in certain conditions. Overall, the AMA believes the proposed rulemaking is one step closer towards opening the airspace for more commercial UAS operators. In addition, the association does not believe these rules will have a significant impact on model aircraft hobbyists due to the existing guidelines for safe and responsible operation. In the response, the AMA stated, AMA safety code does not currently allow for flights over people. However, we do understand that some commercial applications present the need for UAS to fly over people for effective and efficient operations. We believe these operations should be allowed provided they can be done safely and any potential risk to people on the ground is appropriately mitigated. In addition, AMA safety code allows night flights as long as a lighting system is in place that provides the pilot with a clear view of the model's altitude and orientations at all times. We believe this policy continues to make sense and is similar to what the FAA is proposing. If you would like to read the AMA's entire response, you can find it on our website at aero-news.net. Now let's take a quick look at a few short stories making rounds of the small UAS and hobby drone communities. It's time for today's Drone Minute. Authorities now believe the chaos caused by a drone at the Gatwick Airport this past December may have been an insider job. Gatwick COO Chris Woodruff told the BBC whoever was operating the drone seemed to have knowledge of the airport's operational procedures. The drone used in the incident was specifically selected due to its ability to fly under the radar of the airport's DJI Aeroscope detection system which was being trialed at the time. This incident affected over 140,000 passengers during the airport's three-day closure. The person who flew a drone over Fenway Park during a Boston Red Sox game has been identified as a juvenile. The DJI Phantom was spotted several times over the park during the game between 9.30 and 10.20 p.m. The drone has been seized by the Boston police. Know Before You Fly, an initiative to promote safe and responsible use of UAS, praises passage by the Utah Legislature of SJR 20, which recognizes the campaign as an official source of safety information for UAS operators. The joint resolution is sponsored by Representative Adam Robertson and Senator Wayne Harper. Parrot launched a new drone capable of capturing 4K HD video and thermal imaging, the ANAFI Thermal. The drone utilizes Parrot's ANAFI drone platform and equips it with a built-in 4K HDR camera with a 21 megapixel Sony sensor, as well as a FLIR radiometric thermal imaging camera. And that's it for today's Drone Minute. The New Zealand CAA determined the crash of an Aeroproct 22LS was not caused by a drone, but rather from UV degradation to the windscreen. Journalist Rod Vaughn and his son were flying over an open mine north of the town of Waihai. They were viewing the mine at about 1,600 feet MSL and 80 knots when the windscreen failed. The sudden inflow of air caused both cabin doors to come open and aerodynamic control was compromised. Vaughn made a forced landing and following touchdown, the aircraft bounced and came to an inverted rest, injuring both him and his son. Vaughn originally reported a possible collision with the drone to have caused the crash. But further examination of the windscreen showed evidence of UV degradation, which can affect the polymer bonding properties resulting in sudden failure. 
The AMA has offered comments in response to the FAA's advance notice of proposed rulemaking on the safe and secure operations of small UAS, including model aircraft. The organization's position is that model aircrafts present no new risk or danger into the airspace and therefore should not be subject to new regulations. They urge the organization to take into consideration the existing safety guidelines already in place and not to take a one-size-fits-all approach to regulations. The AMA stated, Not only would that approach run counter to the long-standing principles guiding both manned and unmanned aviation regulations, but it would also place an unnecessary burden on about 200,000 members of the AMA. If you would like to read the AMA's comments in full, you can also find this on our website at aero-news.net. And that's it for today. Airborne's AMA Drone Report is presented weekly in cooperation with the Academy of Model Aeronautics. If you would like more information on the exciting hobby drone world, check out modelaircraft.org. Thanks for watching.